three ridiculous big upsets in the world of sports this weekend. We had the T20 Cricket Championships where the, the Windies, the West Indies, defeated England, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll get to in just a second. Uh, the Celtics ending the Warriors' home winning streak. Uh, the Warriors hadn't lost since January of 2015 on their home court. Uh, and lastly, but not leastly, more made-up words, Real Madrid uh, defeating Barcelona in the new Camp. Mm -hmm. Upset, kind of. Kind of, kind of. But I know a lot of the media articles ran it as, as I an know. upset. But. We're going to start off uh, quickly with cricket, which we uh, knowingly and admittedly uh, do not know that much about. But thanks to a couple articles, we're going to pull some quotes of you just to bring you some of the news that which happened and a great comparison to those who also don't know cricket to show how much or how big of an upset this was. Uh, so SB Nation, uh, very kindly, threw us these words. So, quote, the West Indies were down 19 runs with six balls left. Now, keep in mind that England scored a total of 155 on 120 balls, so the run rate average is 1.29. The West Indies needed a whopping 3.16 in that final over. Simple math tells you they needed to Three, they needed to triple that of what England did. That I can follow. We continue. Carlos Brathwaite had an unenviable task. Everything relied on him to chip away at the seemingly insurmountable lead. The first ball, a six. Now his team needed 13 of five balls. Next delivery, another six. Now the team needed seven of four. At this point, they were still statistically eliminated. He hit another two sixes to win the game off four balls. So what does that mean? Uh, those who follow cricket, obviously this is just layman's terms. You understand it. That's awesome. Good for you guys. Uh, for those of you guys like me out there, uh, I, I don't, uh, and I ha obviously have trouble following it, so if you have any reference articles to put in the comment section, help me out here. Uh, but this SB Nation article made this comparison, which if you're an American sports fan, everybody would understand, and he had this to say. To give a comparison, this would be like a batter having four at-bats in a row in the bottom of the ninth in Game 7 of the World Series and hitting four home runs back to back to back to back. This doesn't happen. This has never happened. This might be the greatest comeback in the history of sport and cricket. Yeah. First off the bat, it's <laughs> pun intended. Um, <laughs> it's that it's no surprise to me that this is getting an enormous amount of uh, coverage. But again, it is a surprise to people um, from the U.S. Spe specifically who don't understand cricket and don't I know, see I'm it. In the, a, I'm in the minority here. Yeah, I get it. It's but it's like it, I grew up obviously in a culture in which cricket was very popular. I never found it interesting, but that's just me. I know I found rugby interesting as well. I was one of the many who were simply, you like football, or my dad was like, I like football, you like football. And that's just the way it works in the UK. It's, like, it's still the most popular sport, but that being said, I'm not uh, immune to knowing about how important cricket is, specifically in England, because England have been known as a fantastic cricket team, along with Australia, along with South Africa, and along with now, as you can mention here, the West Indies, who have surprised everyone by defeating England, not just by defeating them, but also how emphatic their comeback was. And it's not only me who was so surprised, well, not surprised by this, but also taken by the, uh, the I would say, just the overall feeling of that game. But Usain Bolt, take a look at what his reaction was. Champion, 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 yo, you see that champion? Bravo a champion, Chris a champion, Brett is a champion, Samuel's a champion, West is a champion, hey, he is a loser. <laughs> Bro, now I'm falling on the floor with twice. Hey, my name is up. West Indies a champion. Uh, uh. <laughs> no one else could make the running man is more significant than Usain Bolt. He could just do the running man as he dance all the time. People would be like, oh, it's the fastest man on the planet. That's Any of my dance. teams ever won a championship, I will do exactly that <laughs> dance for you and your Instagram, Francis. I will I give you that it. video. I will package it, and it will go right to you. All right. Uh, good for you, Sam Bolt. So he's happy. But, uh, okay, off to – so cricket, cricket fans rejoice. Uh, comment section below uh, what you guys think about the, the comeback. Is it the greatest comeback in sports? Is it the greatest comeback in cricket history? It's the greatest upset this weekend. That's my choice already. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, make your case for the Celtics. Well, i got to make a case because I'm a huge NBA fan, so obviously the world is against me here. But the Celtics uh, came into the, to the Warriors' house, uh, and Brad Stevens is, is only proven game after game after game how crafty, creative, and good of a head coach that he has become in the NBA. Uh, he was a great college coach with Butler, and he took him to two straight finals. Uh, he comes to the Celtics. He's young, and he thinks like this NBA does. Yeah. He is not stuck in the past. While 
coaches that have been around for a long time, the likes of Greg Popovich, have been able to adjust with the times, uh, but have admittedly hated the th- like hate the three pointer. Brad Stevens is embracing every new element of this game. One of the things he did that no other team has been capable of doing is he put Marcus Smart, Avery Bradley, uh, and Evan Turner when he was cycling in, and he made them hound Steph Curry and Klay Thompson at the perimeter. They were guarding them 38 feet out at times, sometimes even more. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you need intensely athletic, smart, agile guards to do that because just keeping up with Curry and Thompson around, they don't need space to shoot. Their release is so quick. That was one of the major, major impact parts of that game was the two guards up top. Uh, And also just... The way that the Celtics are able to create shots, one, if you notice, Brad Stevens has an unbelievable way of taking Steve Kerr's game plan from last year. If you watch the tape of the Warriors last year when Steve Kerr's putting this offense together, you watch Brad Stevens this year, they both use double stack screens, they both use close the door, which is one of my favorites. Uh, basically two guys, well, I mean, Steve Kerr does all the time, Draymond and sometimes the, the big for the Warriors, whoever's on the court, if it's even Iguodala playing a big position or if it's uh, Bogut or Varejao. Uh, they'll have Curry cut it, like come through and Draymond, uh, Draymond and Bogut close the door, boom. It's like a hard pick. Sometimes they fall over. It's great. But uh, Brad Stevens was able to uh, really just, I don't want to say exploit a tired Warriors team, uh, but you have to be able to score at a ridiculous pace. You need to score over 100 points to really beat the Warriors. I know this, the Spurs played them and, and beat them down to a point where they only had, they had under 80 points. But uh, that matchup, my God. Uh, I understand that the NBA has become unwatchable. We've done a clip on that with Charles Barkley and such. And the Warriors versus the Celtics included one of the teams that was watchable. But let's get to our final one. I was going to say, Real Madrid, I do think that was a big, uh, a big upset. and uh, said- Well-deserved win. But what? Why? Why would? Why are some outlets really calling this a, a shocking, stunning well, defeat to Barcelona? Thirty-nine game unbeaten streak was snapped, right? Barcelona. Yeah, they haven't lost in like a year. They have either. not lost in a while <laughs> as well. Like thirty-nine games. I mean, you're putting that into NBA terms. It doesn't seem as much, but it's in a lot. Like we don't play as many games in a week, so it's a long span. And Barcelona, this team, have been called the immov- the immovable object, right? And and in this situation, they did meet an unstoppable force because I think Zidane was an unstoppable force in this. Mm-hmm. And again, coaching is going to win you this game. Francis Maxwell is going to win you this game. He's going to tell you that Casemiro has to play. And I'm going to keep harping on this decision. Did you order your shirt yet? I think I will want a Casemiro shirt because he kept. But I, I want his shorts more than anything because you know how much those shorts are worth? They have Messi, Neymar and Suarez all in the pockets. So those shirts are worth a while. Up top! I can't see. Good. Real Madrid under Zidane, it is that motivation. It is that aggression. As I stated in our recap, they looked so hungry to get in Barcelona's face and shut them down. And that's half the battle against Barcelona. Because how many teams have we seen try to do this to this Barcelona team? They get in their face, next minute, one, two passes, and you're just left look, looking stupid. But it's all about yeah. how you back up that aggression with your attacking prowess. Real Madrid in the first half did not close that gap between Bale, Ronaldo and Benzema and the midfield support. What happened when they did? Tony Cruz was a man who provided the cross, which took a deflection, yes, but ended up in Benzema's path. That's pushing, get grown in confidence when you frustrate Barcelona and then moving on. You can't just sit back and be like, all right, we've we frustrated them. That's coaching, that's motivation, and that is a purpose in which Zidane had enforced to his team. So I applaud Zidane, but again, for a lot of the mainstream outlets, and I do agree with this side, it was considered an, an upset. But for me... And I'm sure a lot of people will agree, it depends. I think it's between the, the initial two, between Golden State losing and, of course, West Indies beating England. But we want to know what you guys think in the comments section below. Hit us up on Twitter at TYT Sports at Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason Rubin 91 on Facebook. A lot more Facebook original content uh, coming your way, so make sure to check that out.